It's the final event of an historic season. Wow! In the heat of the summer, the FLW Tour comes to the most historic river in America, the mighty Potomac. We all dyed our tail chartreuse. If you've ate a plain hamburger, and then all of a sudden you add mustard to your hamburger. Ooh. Yeah. The bass are hungry and the feeding frenzy is on. Who will finish on top at the end? FLW starts now. Welcome everyone to the last event of our 2017 FLW Tour here on the Potomac River presented by Costa Sunglasses. I'm Travis Moran alongside Rob Newell. And Rob, you've been a longtime contributor for the FLW Bass Magazine as well as the uh, website FLWFishing.com. Um, with all those years experience, a ton of insight you have to offer not only the bodies of water but the fishermen themselves. So thanks for joining us today. Yes, sir, Travis, you bet. I'm looking forward to it. The Potomac River, wow, what a rich heritage of tournament bass fishing here on the Potomac River. If you look at the names that have won here in the past, the Guido Hibbins, Jay Yellis's, Denny Browers, the list is so long and uh, it's a phenomenal fishery. The thing that's a little weird about it is it's always kind of a community hole driven place. The, the tours have been here so long, so many times, and uh, they've all figured out where better. those fish go. And you start up there around Broad Creek, um, you work your way down Piscataway. There's a big, big Belmont Bay is always a, a good place. Uh, Mattawoman Creek, of course, where, is where they're putting in at. Just below that, you have a little creek called Chickamuxin. Now, we haven't seen much action in the Aquia and Anjumoy area, but that's kind of the southern limits of where bass fishing is done on the Potomac. Beyond Nanjimoy and Port Tobacco down there, you kind of get in salt water mm -hmm. and, and uh, it, it's, it's real fragile. So most of it is going to take place from, you know, the midsection of the river up to DC, maybe broad. We didn't, we're not going to see a whole lot down there around Aquia or Nanjimoy. I've been fishing uh, this river for probably about seven or eight years. I do the northern coasts and I come here about once a year and I've got to know it pretty well over the last couple of years. I, I paid my dues the first one or two years, but I think I got a good handle on it. And uh, there's certain spots I want to hit better at certain tides, but I don't necessarily run the tides. When talking about tidal water, you know, you got two kind of keys of thought. Some chase the tides, okay? Some are, are trying to find that bite window and keep moving, and then some guys sit in one spot and really uh, they know it's a productive area and they just try to figure those fish out throughout the day and make little adjustments but they know those fish are there and it's all about reconnecting with them. Anytime you're fishing tidal fisheries, you're gonna have high and low. Uh, what I like to do is find areas that are fish are catchable during a high tide and find areas that fish are catchable during a low tide. I prefer the last two hours of outgoing in the first two hours of incoming anytime I'm on a tidal fishery. In years past when the river's been a little tougher, you hear about chasing tides up and down the river. Um, but this time around, these guys have been able to just get in these grass beds, sit all day long through both tides. They have high water spots and low water spots. What I'd look for was clean grass. And by that, I mean, you drag a bait through it, you may get a strand of grass, but you're not getting this black mossy stuff. And for me, that was definitely what I was looking for. And if I could find that clean grass, I, I could get bit. Let's take a quick look at our leaderboard now. Uh, some familiar uh, names that we've been seeing all year long, but then also some, uh, some new faces that are uh, trying to finish off this season on a strong note. So we're gonna start with Tom Monsoor. I mean, this guy came off a horrible performance in his backyard on the Mississippi River. He was looking so forward to that tournament, having an FLW tournament on his home waters, and he just kind of stubbed his toe. Man, he is really making up for it here at the Potomac River. And then close behind Monsieur is Chris Johnston, a Canadian pro. You would think this is a long way from home. Uh, you know, he might not have much experience, but you couldn't be further from the truth. Him and his brother, Corey, have absolutely dominated the Northern Division uh, for the Costa Series. And uh, this often includes the Potomac River, where they've now gotten accumulated a lot of experience, and it's showing here in this event. I'm going to start real close to the ramp. Um, I got a couple fish there in practice. I got one yesterday. I'm gonna try and uh, start there, get a quick one. We're gonna head to Belmont Bay, put the power poles down, make 20 casts, move, pick the power poles up, move 10 feet forward. Sun shining, a little bit of mist. I'm gonna be chewing this morning. Let's do this, man. Yeah. 
I decided to start close because I'm not, I haven't had much, anything going on anywhere else. So on a low tide. I fished two different types of areas. I fished mill four areas that were topped out. What I mean by topped out is grass that it has grown and laid over. On a low tide, I look for grass that's laid over. And then on my high tide areas, I went to areas that grass was kind of sparse, where I could do a lot of cast and cover a lot of ground. That's fish number one, and they ain't even quit launching yet. These anglers, they know these fish are in these grass beds, but then it's about figuring out those little nuances, the little spot within the spot. And I think we're gonna be seeing a lot more of that today and tomorrow because now we don't have as many anglers. Taking a look at Chris Johnson. Chris actually started the morning in uh, our third place spot. The way I'm fishing um, in this grass, that's how you're gonna get those big females. And I'm not getting a lot of bites as you can tell, but the ones I'm getting, they're, they're good ones. Um, and it's my style of fishing. I got a 65 pound braid uh, with a mini flipping jig and I just throw that thing all day. I'll change it up the odd time, throwing a few different things, but 90% of my fish have come on that jig. And uh, it's just, it's the way I grew up fishing back home. Believe it or not, we don't just catch smallmouth. That's that's how we catch largemouth, it's the flip and milfoil. And it's what I want to do, and that's what I look for when I come here. I just made a quick stop here in Mad Woman on this grass bed and hoping to trick one up, get a bonus fish, but it's not looking good. And uh, now we're just going to start working our way up north and I've probably got about 10 spots and I'm gonna start hitting them. I take that back, we did get a bonus one. Stop paid off. It's fish number one. And on the right hand side, we've got Andy Young. One of the few that has something to himself. Big key for Andy. He's had the privilege of kind of fishing by himself on the Potomac River, and that's a rarity. So what this is, it's about a 200 yard long flat um, with a strip of milfoil going down that's, you know, 10 to 50 yards wide. And I'm just gonna milk it and try to get some big ones out of it. The Potomac is, is, is a huge body of water and it is very overwhelming to me. It fishes basically just like my, my home lake, which is Lake Minnetonka up in Minnesota. It's full of milfoil and, and Lake Minnetonka is full, full, is full of milfoil as well. And that's one of my favorite of all time ways to fish. And it's basically how I learned how to catch bass was flipping milfoil. And the other saying, fish your strengths, flipping milfoil is one of my strengths. So that's pretty much what I've been doing all, the whole time. He's got the centipede with uh, the colored weight, and, and uh, man, if, if that's what makes a difference in your mind and makes you feel like, man, you know, that fish is going to bite. How can he not bite this lure right here? I mean, look at it. It's perfect. That's what counts. You don't want to be flipping like, uh, I don't know if they can bite this. Got one. Big one. Get out of there. Get in here. Ooh. Yes. Now that's a, that's a good start. Yeah. Mm. Gosh, that's got to be close to four pounds. Let's go over to uh, Tom Monsieur. To me, the irony is we just came from the Mississippi River, where Tom, that's Mon Monsieur's home water. He didn't do too well there. Brian Schmidt, who's the stud at Potomac, won that tournament. And now Monsieur's come to his backyard mm -hmm. and it come to Schmidt's backyard and is leading the tournament. They're both rivers, they're both got grass, northern strain largemouth, and Schmidt and Monsoor, that is their wheelhouse. Tom, in his mind, to some degree, is on the Mississippi River right now. There, there's grass out there. Usually they're chasing minnows in here pretty good. They're not this morning. It must be the wind and the rain, but it's a really natural looking shad. I've been, you know, fishing a jig, a crayfish every day. Could be a game changer. We'll see, maybe they want a minnow today. To me, it's fun to come to a place like this. You know, it's like going to Florida or something, you know. I like fishing shallow weeds. 
So I, I love it. Tom Monsieur getting right to it, fishing the grass beds like m most of the other anglers in the top 20, um, but not fishing towards, actually fishing away from the bank here. There's a little ditch that he's sitting in. His boat is sitting in the middle oh, of a, gr a, a, a ditch, a deeper ditch, and he's surrounded by grass on both sides. Still not good, but a little better. The FLW Tour is brought to you by General Tire. Anywhere is possible. BRP Evinrude. Learn more at evinrude.com. You can get more from your oil with Quaker State. Costa Del Mar. See what's out there. Ranger Boats. Still building legends, one at a time. And by PowerPole, swift, silent, secure. That's what we're looking for. Looks like a fish, don't it? That's not it, that's not it. We're gonna have to do something. These are the littlest ones I've caught so far. Yes, yes, yes. Welcome back everyone to our coverage here of day three on the Potomac River for our last event of the 2017 tour. Yesterday, the low tide was actually before the uh, blast off, but today it was actually right after blast off. So a lot of these anglers that they knew where they needed to be on that low tide, right when that water starts moving again, they were hoping to get a longer bite window. We've already seen a lot of anglers catch some fish here. Here comes uh, Brandon in 15th place, and now already this morning he's moved up. We've seen a lot of guys move up. There's your top 10. That's the spots you want to be in at the end of today. Yeah. This being the last event, these guys all got a lot of points. This was such a big deal to finish out the season right. Um, extend your season to get to go to the actual Forest Wood Cup. Here's our first look at uh, Bob Burley who started the uh, morning in second place. Can you believe on Thursday, I, it, it was nonstop all day, right here. And now you just, I don't know. I was fishing today the same place I have been all week. Uh, I think they were spawning in there because I had caught several fish with red tails and big bellies. And um, well, I, I was kind of excited actually because I thought, well, they're going to be there for a week at least. So the second day I go out there, a little bit tougher, lose a five pounder on the second cast, get fewer bites, but I end up with 16 something. And today I go back there, I don't get a bite all day long. The last two days it's been, let's weigh in about 9 30 or 10. So maybe I'm going back to the old Bob Burley. Can't catch him. But it's gonna get all better. It's gonna get better as the day goes on. Tide's coming up, sun's out a little bit. Just gotta keep it together and keep hammering. Finally, just get me a hookup. He's about a third of the size of what I need. Right now, I just take anything. Howard Monsieur, a 14 year FLW Tour veteran, but is yet to get his first tour win. So, this could be something really cool witnessing uh, a first for him for definitely a guy that's put his time in for yeah. sure. He's looking for grass that's similar to what he fishes on the Mississippi, more that kind of, a, it, you know, it, it's not complete thick matted stuff. It's open, it's gappy, especially the more the tide comes in, the more it comes up. It, you know, it pulls that grass up, puts more space between it, puts more water over the fish's head. One of my jigs was working better than normal. Started fishing it a little bit different. I was at home this last couple weeks, I'd been fishing a jig a little bit different, a little slower, and I was killing them. So I did it here too, and it seemed to work pretty good. Ooh, this might be my good one. Oh yeah, that's a nicer one. Come on, baby. Oh, there we go. That helps. That's my good one for the spot. I guess it was worth coming here again. 
Rob, some early action. Uh, very clear that a lot of the strategies uh, start in the morning is uh, to catch a limit as fast as possible. And uh, as we look at the different um, techniques that are going to take place today, let's go over General Tire Roadmap to Victory. First and foremost, it's imperative at the Potomac that you try and find something to yourself. So much crowded conditions, so much pressure. It doesn't even have to really be an area. If you can find a technique to yourself, a lure that nobody else is throwing, even a speed or a retrieve, something that is unique to what you're doing, something to yourself. Number two, tidal timing, getting the, the timing of the tides down. Doesn't necessarily mean running the tides back and forth up and down the river. You don't have to do that, but getting in an area, seeing the water come up and the water go back down and knowing where to be in your area as that water rises and as it falls. Finally, lure rotation. I don't think anybody in this tournament is gonna win with one single lure. They're not gonna be able to do that all four days. The water goes up, the water goes down. You need different presentations in this grass for high water situations and low water situations. Some of the key baits I've used this week is literally my whole tackle box. I think I've weighed in 15 fish and I think they've come on eight different lures. So, you know, anytime you're on a grass fishery, you're always going to be presented with different scenarios. That means you could have thick grass, sparse grass, you know, thicker vegetation. So each application calls for a different lure. So this week has really been a lot of rods on my deck for looking for certain things within the grass. Nice. That sucker come up and hit it right there, chased the shad right at the boat, and ate a crawdad. <laughs> That's what you call hungry. He's like, yeah, pe peanut butter and jelly, steak sandwich, I don't care, I'm hungry. He made a bad mistake, though. I just got into one little group of them here. They're not the right size, but I know you can get the odd, decent one mixed in here. I'm hoping to get some two and a half, three pounders, and then go back and start flipping and try and get another big one. But it's been a really tough day and slow going. I'm sure some people are catching them pretty good, just haven't been able to get those couple good bites today. With this being tidal water, that tide moves up, that bite window moves on up, and we might actually be able to kind of witness these different anglers get into their bite windows at different times because they're located in different areas on, along the river. There's one. Could be a better one. These fish, we always talk about highs and lows, but what they really like is a turn. You know, it, 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 it's been at the top, it's flush, and now it's gonna start going the other way. Nice. He'll help, he's not a giant. There's something about that turning, that shifting of the ebb and flow that really turns a bite on. Uh, same at the low end, when it's dead low and it turns a little bit to start to come first in. Who can capitalize on that? It sounds like he has plans on doing it. You've got to stay positive. Be on your best water at the right times. More with the rest of our anglers after a quick break. Well, let's make a move. Oh, there you go. That's a good one. Come on. That don't need a tag. I'm comfortable. I feel good. Mm. I don't even have five fish. Yeah. That's a good one. Got him. Now that's a call. <laughs> yeah. Welcome back, everyone, to our continued coverage here on the Potomac. One of the things that makes this uh, location a unique place, or a special place, is how much history lines the banks of the Potomac. It's also such a, a rich history place for tournament fishing. Our current leader, Tom Monsieur, he started the day in number one spot and has put together a decent limit today. They've gone to their time-killing places this morning to get their limit, their calm down limit. Now as the tide comes in, they can go to those places and really focus and, and, and pull down and needle the places that they really want to fish. I think the sun came out a little bit now and it's got them looking down in the weeds so the black and blue jig's working again a little maybe, hopefully. We need two more good fish. We got two fish under three pounds. A lot of river knowledge in that man's head right there. Commercial fisherman by trade up on the Mississippi River. 
Also puts together some mighty fine swim jigs, ties his own swim oh, jigs. Come on. That's the technique that he's most passionate about. Come on, baby. Where are you? Oh, come on, come on, that's what I need. Oh, oh, get in there, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. There. Not bad. You know, three pounds. That'll work. Looks like he just hit somebody in the gut with that one. <laughs> I'm back over to David Dudley. Dudley oh, and Bob Oscar. Burley have both uh, both dropped way down, but uh, he, you wouldn't know it exactly. from his demeanor. Mm -hmm. He's, it's all part of the game. It's mm -hmm. good. There's going to be slow times. There's going to be fast times. He really trusts what his assessment of situations and things, and that's mm -hmm. where you may be seeing a little bit of a difference. Even though they're both having slow days, Dudley's just business as usual. I'm going to try to overanalyze stuff sometimes instead of just saying the fish are right here why are they there i don't know oh gosh that's a nice one mm. that's a good one that'd be Number five, and that's a good one too. That's a good solid three. That's what we have to. Well, I had a good start today. I caught like a two and three quarters the first 10 minutes. Thinking, all right, this is gonna be a good day. And then I went about three hours before I got another good fish and I got that one. And I had two decent ones at noon. I still didn't have a limit. So this, this place can be humbling for, even for someone who knows it. I just know that you can pull into a spot though and fill the boat at any point. I'm just uh, fishing these little isolated weed clumps right here. And I've got one good one almost every day right around this area. It's been getting a lot of pressure though, so I don't know how many fish are left, but uh, it's worth a try. There's one. It's a big one. It's a different looking one, but take it. Nice fat one. Solid three and a half. You can see Andy Morgan's just up there. Probably not the guy you want to fish behind, but uh, maybe left us a few. Whew. A great season by Andy Morgan, a guy that just, he's got quite a few Angler of the Year uh, awards under his belt, consistently, consistently in the contention for the AOI title. But one guy who is not out here fishing, but had an absolutely amazing season, uh, Brian Thrift. Uh, huge, huge congratulations to him. The 2017 Angler of the Year, Brian Thrift. I started off to the absolute best year I've ever had. I had two seconds, a third, a sixth, like four top tens in the first five events. And then we got to the river portion of the trail and that's where it started going downhill. Three years ago in 2015, I, I was leading Angler of the Year coming to the Potomac River, and I blew it. So, got redemption this time. <laughs> Ryan Thrift dominated one Angler of the Year with a exclamation mark, and as well, a, a great season by Andy Morgan, a guy that just, he's got quite a few Angler of the Year uh, awards under his belt, and uh, is someone that's always right there, just consistently, consistently in the contention for the AOI title. Every time I've won, I've had to look over my shoulder for Brian. I mean, he's always been there. Brian Thrift knows the system better than anybody alive. He, just like I said, you've got a mindset and a goal. Mine's good, but I think his is better. There's nobody better than Thrift. When it comes to efficiency, there's nobody in the sport that can touch him in terms of how efficient he runs his program. I've said it before and I'll say it again right here in front of him, he's the best out there, period. Congrats, that's awesome. Cody Meyer, your best day yet. 16 pounds and seven ounces, five today. Michael Neal, 15 pounds and three ounces, a five best limit. For Brandon McMillan, 19 pounds and seven ounces, you're the new leader. It's good, I'm happy, happy to be here, and I made the Forest Wood Cup yesterday, so I'm, I'm excited and I'm, I, I can't wait to go fish tomorrow, I'm happy. Chad Warren of Sand Springs, Oklahoma, 
18 pounds and eight ounces. I've had a terrible year uh, for a rookie season. I, I uh, was really doubting myself, felt about an inch tall, and uh, after the last three days, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. So I'm hoping to get out there and get him tomorrow. A six-time Forest Wood Cup qualifier, Tom Monsoor, 15 pounds, five ounces. You got the lead by two ounces. Hey, any day I get to go fishing four days, I'm a happy camper. Under $25,000 on the line? Oh, that'd be, that'd be unreal. Like you say, Brian won it in lacrosse. I'd die to win it here. I really would. Tom Monsoor retakes the lead right here at the end of the weigh-in, but it's only by a couple ounces. And uh, we'll see if Tom Monsoor can hold on for one more day, walk away tour champion, $125,000 richer. And without a doubt, the big story here, Brandon McMillan with an amazing comeback uh, with 126th place uh, start after day one, all the way up to the second place spot uh, going into the fourth and final day. A comeback like that definitely earns him Evan Rude, big mover. Today we're going to go out and try to win this sucker. Woke up this morning, the conditions are about like they were yesterday. Tides are pretty close to the same as they were yesterday, so I think I got a good chance at it. I'm excited. You know, I'm, I'm going out in second place, and I come from 126 after day one, so I'm, you know, I'm relaxed, I'm focused, I'm ready to go catch me a couple bass. See what happens. Hopefully we'll catch a decent limit. I know these guys are going to. Brandon's getting 20 pounds a day, so if I don't get 20 pounds, it's all over. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. It is our fourth and final day here on the Potomac River, and uh, it's a close race. Rob, I'm really excited about this. It's only two ounces that separate Tom Monsieur and Brandon McMillan. It's sure to be a dogfight as we go into the final day here. Yeah, but don't forget about this rookie, Chad Warren. Now, he had a really big day uh, yesterday, and he's got a little something figured out that he did yesterday that could be big today. And we're going to find out pretty soon here, Rob, because they are down at the docks getting ready to blast off. Here we go. It wasn't supposed to be this windy today. And it didn't seem that windy. I wonder where them big waves are coming from. This is uh, Monsoor over on what they call Mason's Neck. You can see those little tidal creeks that come out back there. Those little tidal ditches come out and they wind through that grass flat right there where he is. And Tom has found himself a sweet little, the spot within the spot. That's what we talk about on the Potomac River here a lot. He's been needling that place all week with uh, his famous swim jig and, a, and, a, and as well as, as a swim bag. Ooh, I got some waypoints and there's kind of one little area that a spot on the spot where luckily I could get, you know, a couple good ones every day or decent ones. They were good ones oh, till today. Geez. Oh. <laughs> Unreal. Well, it worked. We got everything. Got the rod, got the fish. <laughs> Number one. Not bad, not good, but not bad. Now, moving over to Chad Warren, somebody who's done something, made that adjustment, needed yeah. to do it over a four day tournament. Top water popper for Warren, something we haven't seen a whole lot of. There were some guys throwing some frogs early on, um, but not really many of the frog or top water people survived. So it's just like it was yesterday here, it's just a little bit later. It's going out and that's, when it was going out and just started coming back up yesterday is when I got most of my better bites. Yesterday, Chad Warren picked up a top water, a popper there, and uh, he went to work on them. The way they want it is slow. I'll throw that thing out there, and usually when it hits the water, it's, it's got to be a long cast, and that bait's hard to throw a long ways because it's so light. So I'm making as far a cast as I can, and usually that fish is going to hit that bait the first within the first, you know, five to ten twitches. You know, after that, if it's not foul with grass from floating on the surface, I'll pull it in. That's big. Every once in a while, I'd, I'd twitch it a couple times quick, but just working that bait slow 
I mean, that water's really clear, and I don't know if those fish are sitting down in that grass and they see that thing come over a hole, but man, they, they were eating it good. Once I got that, that first big bite, I thought, okay, they're gonna, they're gonna do it today. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Chad Warren Show this morning. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow. Big side. He's really, he showed up to play today for that final day. These other anglers aren't gonna go down with a fight. I mean, Brandon McMillan has put together uh, nearly 20 pounds the last two days. And so uh, I think, I, I don't think you can count him out at any point until this final, until, until the weigh-in happens here. But we will be right back here on the Potomac River. We need them bigger than that. It's my first year out here fishing the FLW Tour, and it's been a grind. I hadn't won any money all year. Spent just about everything I had to get out here. It's been a mentally tough year, you know. I, I thought I was pretty good before I got out here. I was feeling pretty low before this tournament. Need to get me uh, three more to have any sort of chance at this thing. Welcome back, everyone. Our morning leader, Tom Monsoor. He's got a small limit in the boat right now, uh, and he's dropped down to that third place spot unofficially. Chad Warren has a quality limit, but then you've got Brandon McMillan that we're gonna take a look at right now. And uh, he's fishing an area that a lot of the top anglers fished this week. Oh yeah. However, he's done something a little different. He's taken a different angle at it. He's backed off of it and, uh, and fishing a little bit slower and really hammering it. I come back from 126 place to make it to the final day. I mean, I put myself in a hole big enough that I probably lost it on day one. So I'm just gonna have fun today. Brandon, uh, he's a flipper from Florida. This is not what he prefers to be doing. Um, it's, it's not what he would call his wheelhouse at all. He would rather be punching that stuff on a short string, but he's picked up a Cinco this week and uh, forced himself to do this and been rewarded for it. Mm -hmm. uh oh, that's a good one. That's a big one. That's a big one. Stay on, baby. God, stay on. That's a giant. <clears throat> yeah, that's right. That a boy. Uh, two and three quarter, maybe. So basically, two 20 pound days that came from that spot right there. Pretty incredible. And one of those guys has moved all the way up to the second place. Uh, the unofficial second spot is Chris Johnston. And of our Top 10, Chris really seems to be the one that has paid the most attention to the title uh, fluctuations. I made a bit of a gamble coming up this creek and I haven't been able to fish at all tournaments, so I'm hoping no one's really hit it either because the only really good tide to fish it on is a low tide. As you can see, when it gets low, all the water gets sucked out of these lily pads and it really concentrates them on anything on this river channel. So all these bass have to come to the edge and. They're pretty fussy because it's so shallow, they're spooky, but it really concentrates them. So you know right where they're gonna be. If you can get a little pad out in a little deeper water, there's usually, there's one, usually one sitting on a big one. Get out of there. First time we've seen this kind of thing. Yeah, that's a, a completely new look, look for us there in the pads. Pretty chunky one way back in. Number five. Mm -hmm. That's exclamation five. Uh, here's a look at uh, Chad Warren. First thing this morning, he was just spanking him on the uh, on the top water popper. If I get two over four in the boat, then boys are gonna have to catch him. You know, two more. I figured I need 17 or 18 to have a chance because somebody's gonna bust a big bag today. It's pretty tight. I want it really, really bad, you know, and I, 100,000 sounds great, but I want the title FLW Tour Champion, you know, I mean, that, that to me, knowing I can hang with, with the boys up there, that'd mean the world to me. Big one. Yes. Chad Warren 
leading this event here, uh, fishing a great tournament, putting his confidence in these in these areas that he thinks he can get that, that one big bite. It ain't over yet. We still got a couple hours. Stick around. Final event of the 2017 FLW season here on the Potomac River. We come right back. The FLW Tour is brought to you by Celebrating 60 years of fish finding excellence, Lowrance. GoPro, this is your life. Be a hero. The world leader in off road innovation, Polaris Off Road Vehicles. Yeti, built for the wild. And by TH Marine from transom to trolling motor. Oh yeah, that helps. Oh God, does that help. There she is. Oh, please eat it, honey. She's bigger than anything I got. I figured McMillan was gonna get him like minimum 17, but he said he's got five babies. It means the door could be wide open. A lot of the better fish come off the docks. I'm sure if I flip docks for the next couple of hours, I'm gonna catch one. Welcome back to our final day of our final event <laughs> of the 2017 FLW Tour here on the Potomac. These anglers have a few hours left. Monsieur is definitely gonna make a run at this lead before the day's over. Guy's moving around right now, but Tom Monsieur is out there on his big fish spot just mm -hmm. plugging away. Everything's been right here in this little area. Just gotta hope there's a couple more. Man. Monsieur, he's about putting together that limit in his limit area, and then he goes to his big fish water and uh, waits him out. It's all been about his swim jig. That's what Tom Monsieur is known for, his signature swim jig. He loves that, out in that mill foil. All it takes is four or five of the right bites. But if the other guy's already got the right bites and they're in the live well, it's all over. <laughs> I tell you, it was so windy. I knew I, that was the only spot I could really fish effectively. It was out of the wind too, pretty much out of the wind. It was still windy, but nothing like the main lake. A little bit of taller weed in that spot, and they seemed to like that one spot a little bit better. So I decided the way the wind was, I was just gonna stay there all day today and grind it out and win or lose, that's what I had to do. Oh, nice one, nice one. Oh, come on, not that again. Oh, yeah, nice one. Oh, yeah, my biggest one so far. Four pounder, baby. Game changer. <laughs> Look at that, that's a beauty. Oh, my God. Thank you, Lord. Oh. Here we got the split screen. Uh, mm -hmm. Look, it's... Chris, is he throwing that one back? Oof. It's good news for mm -hmm. uh, the Johnson family right there. That was a quality fish. And one half of the Joe Bros is coming to life here. It feels like forever, but probably an hour and a half, and I just caught three in the last 15 minutes, so. Oh, I just missed one. Took my trailer. I think they're turning on. At about two o'clock, I ended up catching about a three and a half pounder, and, um, I, I started to click in that, you know what, I'm just, I'm about one fish short right now. I got an hour and a half to get this done, and if I could get one more bite, just a four, four and a half, I, I think I could honestly have a shot at winning this. Oh, that's a good one. Take that one. Not a giant, but you'll upgrade. They should be about three and a half. They just haven't been eaten. I need to get on the same diet as my brother or something. Grow a bit. Oh, brother slam. Oh, man. <laughs> Corey, did you hear that? I felt good. I was comfortable. I was like, okay, I can do this. I got a chance to win a tour event. I just got to keep my mind about me, take it slow, fish like I should, and execute. Chad Warren, he's looking for that one fish, so he's now fishing docks. So I'm trying to find a kicker. I put a lot of effort into the dock fishing when I got here because I'm not that great at fishing grass, being from Oklahoma but I never put it together good enough to be able to rely on them completely. 
I'm gonna need one more big fish probably to win this thing. This is my Hail Mary to try to catch a big one right here. Don't go anywhere. It's the 2017 FLW Tour here on the Potomac River. Two and a half pounder, maybe. That's a beauty. My plan all practice long coming into the tournament was not to fish around anybody. I just kind of figured out, you know, how to maybe get a few bites when it, when it got really tough and I needed to catch a couple. <laughs> yes. Yes. Come on, baby. Yeah. yeah, definitely bigger. Could be one big bite away from uh, making a run at this thing, so. Take that one. As time runs out here on the Potomac, we've seen a wild day. Lots of fish catches, guys making slight adjustments. It's been a blast. We're gonna see if this early morning flurry that Chad Warren had can stand up to these guys breathing down his neck. Michael Neal, Johnston, Monsoor. I mean, he's got the world coming after him. And we're about to find out right now because we're throwing it over to the one and only Chris Jones to weigh in these fish. All right, here we go. Championship Sunday. A five bass limit for Mike Sermon. South Carolina's Brandon Cobb. Wow! Dayton, Tennessee's Mike O'Neill. You know, I mean, I've come in second three times in the tour level, but <laughs> I've never had the bites to where I felt like I had the opportunity to win until today. Wow! Cody Meyer from California takes the hot seat. Next angler up is from Point, Texas. Jeff Sprague, five today for Texas Pro Jeff Sprague. 10 pounds, nine ounces, does move you up to third place. A five best limit for Ontario's Chris Johnston. Wow! Our bass season is just starting back home, so it would be nice to uh, get on a roll here and get a, get a win and then take this back home. Does he have two kickers in his bag? Wow! Kickers to boot. You guys should have seen me out there trying to net that fish and pull him on my rod at the same time. Never done that before until yesterday, but <laughs> boy, it was fun. I mean, I had a blast. Oh! You need 14 pounds and 15 ounces to knock out Chad Warren. Number five needs to be a good one. Let's see the kicker. A five bass limit. Five worth. 11 pounds, 11 ounces. So Chad survives. All the pros have been eliminated except for two guys. We have one left. This is what it comes down to. Yeah, and I do have a popper on my deck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Talking a little trash, I like it, man. Here we go. Fish number one, two good ones. Three good ones. Does he have a five bass limit? for Wisconsin's Tom Monsoor. Oh, this is gonna be so close. Tom, you need for the win, 14 pounds and 13 ounces. Here we go, watch it with me. 15 pounds, two ounces, your champion is Tom Monsoor. Wow! You, my friend, are $100,000 richer gets his first FLW Tour win. You know how many seconds and thirds and fourths, but never a Tour win? Every other win, every other, everything, but not this. This is so cool. Hey, by the way, you won by five ounces over Chad Warren. Unreal. Hey, I lost by one ounce once. So you've been there, man. $100,000, that's a six-figure payday. Hey, that trophy means more to me. The money's neat, you know, but I'm old enough. I've had, I got money. <laughs> I like that trophy. That baby's cool. Your champion, 
from La Crosse, Wisconsin, Tom Monsoor.